What's up guys? Today we're going to be taking a quick look at something called the Magnus Effect. I'm sure you guys have seen the video by Peter Schriepel, in which he builds an RC plane that utilizes the Magnus Effect for lift. Heinrich Gustav Magnus, the German experimenter, is credited with the discovery of the Magnus Effect, even though Sir Isaac Newton was actually the first to notice and describe it. The Magnus Effect was first noticed by the esteemed physicist during a tennis match at his home college of Cambridge. Now that we know the history behind the effect, let's dive into how it works. The theory has its roots in the idea that a rotating sphere or cylinder can produce lift in a certain direction depending on the direction of rotation. In order to produce the lift observed in Peter's video, the cylinder needs to move with the bottom moving into the wind. In this situation, the air from the top of the cylinder is pulled away rapidly and forced behind the cylinder, creating a vacuum. At the same time, the air from the bottom of the cylinder is bunched together to form a type of cushion that the cylinder can float on. It is modeled by this equation right here in order to find the lift. P, or rho, stands for air density. V stands for velocity of the cylinder. R stands for the radius of the cylinder. W, or omega, stands for the rotation rate. And L stands for the length or wingspan of the cylinder. Its performance actually resembles how the standard airfoil works. And in fact, if it weren't for the drag coefficient, these wings would actually be much more efficient. The only problem is that because of their size and unwieldy shape, they can only be used on slow aircraft or boats. There have been numerous experiments with this effect. Airplanes are not the only topic of research in this, however, as boats have been put to the test in this as well. Only recently has the Magnus theory been brought up again, and many futuristic designs for aircraft and even flying cars are popping up. So what went wrong with Peter's experiment? Although it was met with initial success, the design did not seem to be repeatable. First of all, the KFC buckets he was using were not perfect cylinders, but were more conical in shape. Also taking into effect the wingspan and the fact that the wing surfaces were waxed led to early failures seen in the video. He later added air grabbers to help with stability and traction, but the system was still very unstable and resulted in a crash. I played around with the numbers a little bit and I found out a couple things. If my calculations were correct, the KFC bucket should have been producing around 14 pounds of lift at the speed he was moving at. The buckets didn't have a full grip on the air because of the geometry and the waxy coating of the surface. Also, like he noted in the video, the speed of which he was rotating the buckets led to a weird gyroscopic effect that left it really hard to turn. It flies horrible! I was intrigued and inspired by this video to figure out how to optimize this setup. While looking around, I found some videos of other planes that use the Magnus effect to power it. Instead of using a motor to power the rotating cylinders, they instead used a rotational force on rectangular shapes. This technique allowed for more usable wing area at a lower rotation speed. It also meant that there were no negative gyroscopic effects and more efficiency. The rectangular shapes rotate freely around their long axis for optimized stability. Have you ever dropped a rectangular shaped object and watched as it fluttered end over end to the ground? These projects use the same concept. I recently started my own rounds of testing to see if I can achieve a repeatable process that could possibly be more efficient than traditional build methods. One of the planes I thought was really interesting was something called the Tumble Wing. It was a design that came out of a magazine in 2005, and it seems to be relatively underrated. And as of right now, I'm working on building my own out of foam board. I look forward to sharing my results with you in the coming weeks. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new about the Magnus Effect, Leave a like and subscribe to see more of my experiments on this topic. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next week.